so we know obviously technology is developing and you know the study of neuroscience is, is, is developing what what does the latest sort of what's our latest knowledge about what the teenage brain is go, doing what's going on during adolescence with with the brain well really that original research that um, that I came across has been uh, repeated over and over again um, not so much telling us anything very new compared to that original research, but expanding on it. So what that original um, research showed and what the subsequent research has supported is that there seem to be um, roughly three stages of physical brain changes that adolescents go through. Starting, and any ages that I say are going to be very average, very mm. general, starting at around about 10 or 11 and tending to be, on average, um, reached a little bit earlier by girls than by boys. Mm -hmm. And so what seems to happen in that first stage is that there's a great increase in the number of connections, so an increase in the volume of grey matter. And grey matter consists of neurons, nerve cells, and the connections, the, the, the wiring between them. Um, but the increase that we have at around about this time is from connections, not not particularly an increase in the number of neurons. We do grow some new neurons as well, but that's uh, by the by in, in terms of this. It's the, an increase in the number of connections. And then a year or a couple of years later, we go into the second stage, which um, is sometimes described as a loss of those connections, but is better described as pruning. So if you think about a tree, when it's got too many branches and too lots of straggly thin branches, you make it healthier by pruning away the weaker branches. So this seems to be what happens in the second stage of adolescence. So from about the age of 13 to about the age of 15 or 16. But th those are very rough, um, mm -hmm. rough ages. Um, and then in the third stage, so starting about the age of 15 or 16, you've got um, a strengthening of the connections that are left after the pruning of the second stage. And so that third stage of strengthening allows young people to become very expert in the things that they practice a lot. Mm -hmm. And the brain, as, as many people will know, operates on a use it or lose it policy. So typically the areas of the brain that we use, we will retain and grow and strengthen connections. Mm -hmm. And the areas of the brain that we don't use, we will typically lose some connections. Um, and if you think about it in the curriculum in most countries, that, that mirrors, the curriculum mirrors what is naturally happening in the brain because in that stage of the curriculum, you tend to be specializing, but still mm -hmm. trying to give young people um, experience of sport and music and art and the math subjects and the um, more word-based subjects. So trying to keep that breadth, but also starting a type of specialism, which is what they're going to do in the next, when, when they go to university. So actually what, you, what, what we're saying really is that teenagers who say, oh, well, I'm, I'm no good at languages, or I can't speak English at all, or, or whatever, that, that's actually not true, that you're naturally not good at something if you've got this ability to develop new connections all the time. Yes. You, there's, there's quite an argument about to what extent our skills or the things we become good at are wholly or partly down to practice or wholly or partly down to what we're born with. And most people, and I would be amongst them, tend to think that um, the greater influence comes from practice because this is what the brain does. The brain strengthens connections in the, in the areas that, that we use, that we choose to use. Um, and we see ourselves becoming better at things when we practice this, and we see ourselves becoming less good at things when we don't practice. So that then becomes the whole um, growth mindset idea, the idea that you can, that, that the best way to become good at something is to persevere, to have good teaching in the first place, and then to persevere and to, um, to practice uh, diligently and, and have grit and determination. Um, so very much so that the message for any learner and, um, and particularly young people is that if there's something that you, that you feel you struggle with, that you seem to be less good at, you can choose to change that by taking some steps to um, receive the teaching, the good teaching that, that, you're, that you're being offered. Um, perhaps if you don't understand what the teacher is saying, then, then, well, not perhaps, certainly to ask them to explain it in another way or to explain it again. And then to keep practicing, because practicing is how we get better at things. Mm -hmm.